Ooh, baby, it's starting to be that time again. Training camps are starting to open. In fact, this time next week, all 32 teams will be have their ass in training camp. Their asses will be in the jackpot and just getting after it. Uh, and football is, what, 50 days away? Something like that. Or, sorry, what the, what the Rams consider football it is 50 days away. Anyway, uh, good morning football. Uh, they got their summer crew in. And w- whenever... Pete Schrager or Kyle Brandt aren't in the chairs. Uh, the, the the pressure against the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, the bias against them, it gets ratcheted up just a little bit, just a little bit. Now, uh, they, they got Will Silva and Michael Robinson. By the way, remember Michael Robinson when he was quarterback at Penn State? He was a bad dude. Also, uh, how, how do you like moving from quarterback to fullback? And then he was just dynamite in the league for a number of years. That's what Tebow should have done. Anyway, I also got James Palmer. I have issues with him, but we'll get to that in a sec, as well as Mike Garofalo. That's right. So they're talking about how the Vikings challenge the Packers in the NFC North, the Grusy Grove Green Bay Packers, because the Packers, again, allegedly, uh, allegedly have uh, two straight-time NFL MVP, A-Ron a- Rodgers, again, allegedly. Uh, again, another like reason 5,972 why people shouldn't be allowed to vote on anything. Sort of is what it is. But Mike Garofalo, he went to bat for our boys. He went to bat for the Vikings. Uh, that's right. And I've always liked Garofalo. He's got that summer tan going on. Uh, and he, he's not related to Janine Garopp- uh, Garofalo. Nailed it. And he's also not related to Jimmy Garoppolo because they're two completely different names. But sort of is what it is. Also, he, he's kind of funny. I, I, I like him. But uh, here's what he said. So uh, the, the haircut. Uh, host was saying, oh, how can the Vikings challenge Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? <laughs> I'll hang up and listen. Uh, this is what Garofalo said. Quote, easy. Uh, if Kirk Cousins and Kevin O'Connell are on the same page, and they should be. They know each other. They've worked together before. Uh, Kirk Cousins knows the offense very well. Oh, and I bet you they've watched film sometime within the last four years. It, it doesn't take them four years to sit down in a dark room. Uh, that's what they're doing here. <laughs> That old stuff. Uh, if they're on the same page from the jump, I'm not talking about late October, early November. I'm talking about from the jump. We've seen this offense come in and kickstart some quarterbacks late in their career, Aaron Rodgers being one of them. So it's interesting that he mentions this because people forget that the 12-year-old boy, uh, LaFleur, was Sean McVay's o- original OC in Los Angeles. Well, whatever, uh, with the Rams uh, when he got the job in 2017 because uh, it originally... LaFleur was that OC. Basically, he was Kevin O'Connell uh, five years ago. And then in 2018, LaFleur went to Tennessee so he, get, he could get a play-calling OC job. And then he got the job with the Greasy Grammy Green Bay Packers 2019. Uh, again, allegedly Aaron Rodgers becoming NFL MVP over the last two years because there there have been a lull in Rodgers' career, even though he had all the weapons. He had Devontae, he had Jordy, he had a Randall Cobb uh, when he was still uh, with us, right? So, uh, I mean... You could give credit to a branch of the McVay tree offense just bringing uh, Aaron Rodgers back to life. And uh, he continued, uh, we've seen that Sean McVay was able to, uh, to at one point with Jared Goff. Yeah, Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl. That's how good Sean McVay is, baby. That's right. Uh, but then bring in Matthew Stafford and find success that way. And uh, like we said, the parallels between Kirk Cousins and Matthew Stafford pretty damn close. Uh, uh, Matthew Stafford never won a playoff game in Detroit, even though he had a first bell Hall of Fame wide receiver in Calvin Johnson. Uh, they just never got it done, but it was never Matthew Stafford's fault, right? It, it wasn't his issues. Like he's play, just playing on a bad team, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes to the Rams and wins the Super Bowl. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And then he continued. So I really believe that uh, you saw a Kirk Cousins last year that continues to progress. This is a guy who had success back in Washington. Well, he had success in that he got paid. And his OC that final year, Washington 2017, was Kevin O'Connell. Uh, when O'Connell was back there, uh, that's what I said. Uh, but I think he's still getting better. We still may not have seen the best of Kirk Cousins. And we will make the argument that since the bye week in 2020, Kirk Cousins has played the best football of his career. And now he's not putting up the Mondo stats like he was in Washington back in the day. But in terms of putting together game-winning drives, which he had a number of them uh, last year, in terms of keeping uh, the offense uh, in in games, in terms of just trying to give this team the best chance to win, and then the defense all of a sudden lets him down, Kirk Cousins was, has been that guy uh, over the last year and a half. So I, I do believe that we may still have not seen the best of Kirk Cousins because now you do have him working with Kevin O'Connell. Now you do have a potentially better offensive line. Now you do have Jefferson blooming to the best wide receiver in the game. So I, I do think that Kirk Cousins is set up for success, which means that the Vikings in turn are set up for success. Now if that defense can get its head out of its ass, I think that they will have a shot. But props to Mike Garofalo. 
Right. So I, I understand that producers and the powers that be in the, with the national media, Jeroni haircuts are just getting after him. It's like, how dare you talk uh, nicely about the Vikings? Uh, although Garofalo is not a national media Jeroni haircut because he's got he, he's got follicles like me. That's right, man. That's right. So props to Garofalo. Uh, respect there. Uh, but also, oh, so we mentioned the payoff. Uh, so James Palmer, when it was his, his turn to talk at the dish, he was talking about, well, you know, uh, the Vikings don't really have much uh, edge rushing depth beyond Zedaria Smith and Daniel Hunter. You would think that a guy at NFL Network, a guy that's been reporting on the league, would realize that it's Daniel. It's been Daniel since he came out of the womb. It's been Daniel since he was at LSU. It's been Daniel since he came into the league as a third round pick. But Daniel Hunter, please. Please, please, please. I, I, it's, it, it's infuriating. Daniel Hunter, get the hell out of here, man. But uh, anyways, your thoughts are thoughts. Gerald Fowler showing some love to the Vikings on Good Morning Football. How the Vikings can punt the Greasy Grammy Green Bay Packers. And Kirk Cousins, we may not have even seen his final form. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But till next time, Skull Production Value.